So whether you're working on a complex layout or just trying to keep your elements in check, in InDesign, layers are crucial to maintain a clean workflow. Earlier in the course, I introduced you to the layers panel, but in this video, we are going to go deeper, where I will encourage you to get hands-on and this time have a go and follow along with me. In this video, we are going to cover some crucial topics you will need to know when working with layers. So let's jump in and see how layers work. Now, when working with layers, it all revolves around the layers panel. If you cannot see your layers panel, you can come up to window and click layers. So when working in InDesign, every single visual element in your work area will be set on a layer. As I scroll through this pamphlet document, we can see that there are a variety of visual elements we have on the page. When working in InDesign, things can get complex pretty quickly. So to streamline your workflow, it can help to pay attention to and manage your layers. Now, if we look over in the layers panel, we can see that for this document, I have multiple layers, type through to base. Here, I use these layers as a way to manage my visual elements. On the base layer, I keep all the elements set in the background as I toggle off the visibility of the base layer by clicking the eye symbol in the layers panel next to the name, we can see those elements disappear. Same with the images layer. Any images in my document are placed in the images layer. And as I toggle the visibility off, we can see them disappear. And now we are only left with the type elements in the document. All text in my document is placed on the type layer at the top. Type is normally the most legible item in a composition and will almost always be on top of everything else. So here I have placed the type layer at the top. So in InDesign, layers work a little differently from say Photoshop, where every single item is on its own layer. In InDesign, layers work more like layer groups. If I come and click the drop down next to the name, I can scroll down where we can see all the parts that make up each layer and where they stack on top of each other. So each layer consists of parts. In the layers panel, you can also change the hierarchy of the layers. By simply clicking on a layer and dragging it up or down, you can snap it above or below another layer. So the good thing about setting layers up in this way is that you can easily lock a layer and its contents. Let's say I'm working on the type and I don't want to select any other element on the page by mistake. I can click the lock square next to the other layer names in the layers panel. And now I'll only be able to click on elements in the type layer without accidentally selecting any other objects on other layers. This is a simple way to keep everything organized and improve workflow, especially if you have a lot going on in your compositions. Now, it's also important to remember your layers when working with parent pages. So here is a more complicated document consisting of multiple spreads. If I come into the pages panel and click into the parent pages, we can see that there are some items in here. When adding elements to your parent pages, make sure to place them in the correct layer so they are visible when applied to your pages in the right hierarchy. In this document, for example, we have type, images, and base as individual layers. Any type placed on the parent page should be placed on the type layer. So when applied to the document, it will appear on top of any images or objects on the layers below. So back into the first document, as I click through multiple frames in the comp, I can also see that some have different bounding box colors. This will represent which layer the visual element resides on. And if we press W on the keyboard to enter into normal mode, we will see all the bounding boxes and their colors. If I click on the text frame, we can see these are green. And that is because they are on the type layer in the layers panel, which we can see is labeled green. Now, if I come and click on an image in the background, we can see this is red, matching the image layer in the layers panel. So in InDesign, the frames can also let you know which layer they are set to. This can help you keep everything on the right layer and keep you on top of your layer structure and organization. Now you can also customize this. If you come to the layers panel and click on a layer, then right click and select layer options, up will pop a menu, and in here, you can click the drop down and change the color of the layer, easy. Now in InDesign, there are lots of ways you can interact with the objects in layers in order to get control of your composition. So let's jump into a document, get hands-on and look at how we can manage layers. To demonstrate layers, I recommend opening up this practice document I have prepared especially for this exercise. This document can be found in the downloadable folder that comes with this course. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we'll be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder from the description. With the download folder open, click into folder two practice files and open the practice worksheets in design file. And if we scroll to page two, we can see a variety of worksheets. 
For this video, we are going to look at the Layers Worksheet. I'll select the Working with Layers thumbnail. Now I'll either come to the Links panel and click Edit Original, or I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the Worksheet thumbnail, and the worksheet will open up in its own document. So in this worksheet, you can see what we are going to cover, and below we have some documents we will be referring to during this video. To begin, I'll click on the Practice Document thumbnail. I'll either come to the Links panel and click Edit Original, or I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail, and up will pop our practice document. So here is a document that contains four collage compositions. If we look in the layers panel, we can see just one layer called layer one. Now, when creating a document, by default, you will always start with layer one. So what I have done here is create a bunch of collage compositions, but I have not managed them in layers. In this instance, there are a lot of objects in the work area. Having multiple objects on one layer can make working with the document difficult. So now I want to manage my layers to make the document easier to work with. So the first thing I'll do is simply name the current layer and I'll call this images. Then I'll come down to the bottom right and hit the add new layer button and I'll name this type and make sure it's set to the top. I'll create a new layer, name this base and this time click and drag it to the bottom. Now to select our objects, we could use the selection tool. Now in this instance, I want to select the background circle image and place this on the base layer. But as I put my mouse cursor over the background and click, we can see that there are lots of visual objects and frames on top. So right now, it's quite difficult to select the background directly because other objects are in the way. This is a common issue that can occur in InDesign when you have lots of objects on the page. So a really useful tip here, if we press and hold Command on Mac or Control on PC and press and click, as we click, we will start to select through objects immediately below the mouse cursor. If we click once, we'll select the layer on top, click again, we'll select the layer behind that, and if we keep clicking, we will eventually get to the object that we want. With it selected, I'll press Command X on Mac or Control X on PC to cut. I'll click on the base layer, come up to Edit and click on Paste in Place, and this will paste the background on the new base layer. So I'll zoom out and just do that again real quick for the other document elements in each collage composition. I'll press and hold Command on Mac or Control on PC and start to click. Click through my object layers, cut and paste them onto the base layer until they are all on their own layer. I know if I toggle the visibility of my base layer, we can see that these objects are now sitting nicely in their own layer at the bottom. Next, with the selection tool, I'll click on the first type object, press and hold Shift and select the rest of them across each page. I'll press Command plus X on Mac or Control plus X on PC to cut. I'll click on the type layer, come up to Edit and click on Paste in Place. This will paste the type frames on the new type layer. So just like that, I was able to quickly organize my very busy composition into something a little more organized. And as I toggle the visibility of each layer, we can see they are all residing on the right layers. Now, as we move our mouse cursor over the object frames, we will now see different colors, which correspond to the layers in which they now reside. And if we press W on the keyboard to enter into normal mode, we will see all the bounding boxes and their colors. Now, if for example, I wanted to group all the elements on the left, an easy way to do this would be to toggle off the visibility of the text and base layer. And now it's really easy to click and drag over all the elements. With them all selected, I can simply right click and select group or press Command plus G on Mac or Control plus G on PC to group them. Upon click, I can now click on the group and move this around. If I want to maintain the group, but move one item individually, I can double click into the group, select the item, move it around, click off and that will still maintain the group. So now I have successfully grouped these objects. I'll toggle back on the visibility of the base layer and the type layer. So now I'll click on the group, right click and select ungroup, and this will split them back into their individual objects. Now up to this point, we have talked about how layers are structured in the layers panel. If we click the drop down on the images layer, we can see that layers can include lots of elements in their own layer hierarchy. So it will help to think of layers in the layers panel like layer groups. Another thing to keep in mind when working with layers is their object arrangement. As you add new objects to your composition, they are quickly going to build up and there will be times when you will want to manage their hierarchy. If I click this circle visual element, for example, right now this object is on the same layer as the image object below, but currently it's set on top of that object in the layer object hierarchy. So now, for example, I want to push this behind the hand image. I can do this by first selecting it then right-clicking, come down to Arrange and send to Back. Now let's say I want to take these dots here and bring them to the front. Again, I can select, right-click, come to Arrange and this time click to Bring to Front. 
This is an easy way to arrange your objects in your compositions. However, if you have a lot of visual elements, like I do here, sending them to the back or bringing them straight to the front can be quite clunky. You might want to finesse the hierarchy in a more refined way. To do this, you can use the keyboard shortcuts. So this time, I'll click the hand image and press and hold Command on Mac or Control on PC, then either press open square bracket or closed square bracket. As you press this, you can bring your image forward or backwards in steps. This can be good if you don't want to send an image directly to the back, but just move it back or forward a few steps in the composition. Now, we also have the ability to lock individual layers. For example, I'll click on this image here. I can either right click and select lock or press Command L on Mac or Control L on PC. Upon locking an image, you will see a little lock symbol. Now to unlock the object, you can either press and hold Command on Mac or Control on PC and click on the lock icon and this will release or you can come into the layers panel, click the drop down on the layer it resides on, scroll down and you will see the lock here. If you click this, you will unlock that object on the layer. Now in InDesign, you can also use the layers panel to target a layer. If you have a busy document with lots of content and you lose track of an item, we can come into the layers panel. I'll hit the drop down on the images layer and toggle down to a specific object on the layer. For example, I'll right click on this layer here called Jessica Parsons. And then if I click select and find item, it will take me directly to that object. So this can be really useful if you want to search for a particular object in a layer. Now, another aspect of layers we should keep in mind is vector groups. Now, if we come to the first page and select the square texture here, if we double click, we will see that these are individual squares making up this object. Now, sometimes you may use a pattern or texture that you may have created, say in Illustrator and pasted it directly into InDesign. For example, this square composition was originally created in Illustrator to which I copied and pasted the entire thing into InDesign. Upon pasting into InDesign, it pasted in as a single object, but it does in fact contain individual vectors. With it selected, if we come into the layers panel and hit the drop down on the image layer and scroll down, on the right we can find it by looking for the solid color square. And if I click the drop down here, we can see the objects that this contains. So in InDesign, when you paste in objects, they can exist as layer groups within a layer group. Now, if I right click, I could ungroup all of these, but for now, I want to keep them in this grid composition. Now, there is one last thing I want to discuss, and that's layer options. If we come over to a layer in the panel, we can right click on the layer and select layer options. Upon click, we will see a menu that appears. And from here, we can rename the layer, change the color of the layer labels and toggle options to show the layer, lock the layer, print layer, suppress text wrap when layer is hidden, show guides or lock guides. Now, one of these options that is of particular interest is the print layer option. So if we come back to the worksheet and this time open the sample letterhead document with the selection tool, I'll click on the sample document thumbnail. I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail and up will pop our practice document. Now the print layer option controls whether a layer's content is included in print or export files. For example, here I have a document for a letterhead. To create the letterhead, I have some filler texture so I can gauge how the elements will be placed around it. Now, if I press W on the keyboard to toggle between normal and preview mode, in preview mode, we won't be able to see the text. And look over in the layers panel, we will see this layer here called demo text. And if we look closely, we can see that the layer name is in italics. If we right click on this layer and click on layer options, we will see that the print layer checkbox is unchecked. This means that the layer will not print or export. Keep in mind that by default layers are set to print. By unchecking the print layer box, we'll exclude that layer from the final output. This is useful for visual elements you may not want to print, such as guides, notes, or interactive content like menus, giving you flexibility to manage visible but non-printable elements during the design process. When you export a document like this, anything on this layer will not be present. So those are the key principles you will need to know when working with layers in InDesign. Quite a lot to take in, right? But one of the most important things to know in order to navigate and manage your compositions with ease. So now we are all clued up on how to use layers. It's now time to move on to the next subject. See you in the next video.